The villagers of Trunyan have ritualized a third option. Not cremation, not burial. Here the deceased are left exposed, laid out with a few sentimentalized objects. And no stench, stabbing at your sinuses, is left lingering behind them like so many bad memories. For the neutralizing aroma of the Tarumunyan trees, after which the village gets its name. Milo likened my fixation of accepting invitations to attend the cremations of perfect strangers to a Latin phrase he knew from Italy, memento mori, when we seek the life-affirming in the spectacle of its opposite, the leveling sameness of our end. For two days, a grandmother sits across from me on the train. It crosses my mind that she could be my great-grandmother. Or our great-grandmother. Everybody's great grandmother. Distancing the tired vanity of capitalism in Chennai, Grandma and I near the lull of ceremonial Varanasi. In Varanasi, fertility rituals, endless parades, the proving of life over death, there on the riverbank lined with 24-hour crematorium. The poor are necessarily miserable, This is an association Indonesia is altering for me. Searching for a material reason for the lightness of the spirits here in this place. Well, besides animals, kites, chessboards, the closeness of families, ping pong tables, motorcycles, music. Every neighborhood does have its mosque and every home its Koran. Is it possible for a place to become the negative of some imagined paradise? Say if the spiritual world were placed ahead of the real one? Or perhaps it works the other way around. Was paradise imagined to be the opposite of this place? In that case, it's likely one of the better ideas of paradise to be found. I wonder, would the environment be any less botched if the idea here in Grogol were reincarnation? In a Muslim cemetery in Jakarta, the buried await resurrection. They'll even know what their names were so their previous lives can close in on them again. For the ones who burn, though, the wish is for the wind to bellow and gust, not for resurrection nor reincarnation, but their opposite. <laughs> the 
the end of samsara, a situation immaterial. A thing wholly new and not just a different vessel. Holy water, dish water, river water, bath water, soup of ash. The only parts of us that cannot burn down, the pelvises of women and the ribcages of men line the riverbed. And while India released 25,000 flesh-eating turtles to deal with this accumulation, the queen of the Ganges will gradually sweep everything out into the Indian Ocean, southeast towards the Queen of the Southern Seas. Some 8,000 kilometers southeast of Varanasi, on the island of Bali, the last queen of Klungkung hasn't died, but moved onwards. Today is the cremation ceremony, Pratiwa Ida Dewa Agung Istri Putra. A kingdom that once ruled the island now yields fully to the elected political party. Effigies of Naga dragons always accompany those of high caste, especially Brahmin royalty, into the fire.
Her white casket is placed halfway up the architecturally drafted tower. Though warlike in each and every detail, this dagger of a tower is only a symbolic vehicle to float the casket down the street to the cremation grounds. The Hindu order of the animals, a totem concept of evolution, details the tower, symbolically ending where the queen's casket rests. All around the queen and her people, electricians with ladders sever and join power lines as we proceed. Perhaps the greater spectacle we make of our goodbyes, the more of our own energy we spend on a departure, ensuring that it is a very personal loss, painting what the skeptics suspect is meaningless chaos with a streak of our own intention turning closure into a ritual with flame or flowers or community or music or dancing, the more the absent will seem only as dormant as our memories of their farewell, which the people of Klung Kung have placed just below the surface. After three months in the making, this is all only a sort of mandala, an offering to be forgotten by fire, along with the idea of royalty. Her ashes will then be brought to the ocean to meet with yet another queen, she of mythical blood relation to the queen of the Ganges, the queen of the southern sea. Komang's family does the same thing in miniature for their son and brother who spent his life on the ocean working on cruise ships. The family will send him off to sea tonight for the very last time. Yet before the torches and gas tanks, they will spin him. go out with style here, you must burn in effigies of your animal guardian, a flying red lion, a bull, an elephant-headed fish, depending on your caste. But before the flame, they will spin you. The spin and the atman, or soul, ought to forget its way home. A spin, and you will never return to your familial haunts. Family releases family with a spin, untying the dead from reincarnation, and all that is unrequited, the unfinished business that we are. As 
as an island-wide purification. In Denpasar, towering effigy, demons known as Ogo Ogo, undergo a similar eviction by flame. But after a good spin in the center of an intersection, so that these demons will forget their way and never return. Tukar duit, tukar duit. Yang robe, robe. Yang rusak, rusak boleh bos. Dolar, dolar. Wait, wait, wait. Uang lama, uang lama. Dolar, dolar. Tukar uang. At a mass cremation in Lotundu, boys gamble alongside spirits who hang around a while rooting for their grandchildren. To spin is to gamble, is to invite new outcomes. Wherever they are, the departed are surely beyond gender roles now. Meanwhile, the women of Lotundu pick through heaps of smoldering ash in a scent like petrichor. There are no odds to consider, as it must be believed that these women in their blue kabaya will only select the remains of the one whose cremation they have just attended, as the ornate packages of ash are readied for the queen of the southern sea. Thank <laughs> you. 